priorities and goals. As we're looking more at the strategic priorities and goals moving forward, you know, we have an opportunity to fill hopefully some gaps with some other types of funding. So I think it would only be helpful for us to, to really understand the process and be able to, to identify the gaps in our funding. Um, and as we're, you know, walk, working through this process, beginning to look at where we, we want to put money behind the things that are important to us that we've identified. Mark, um, at, at this juncture, a little early on, what's your sense of given the, the, the big picture, big economic picture that we're all facing individually, uh, inflation, fuel costs, uh, that, all that kind of stuff. What's your sense that uh, what allowances are going to be made, or you know, where what what are you getting in terms of direction from uh, executives for as far as you know where we're headed? Following that, sort of, we haven't received a lot of direction. We've received questions about your expenses moving forward. Where do you see any major increases in certain line items, or what? What are there some kickers in place that you can make us aware of? So what I've been doing is where I know there's percentage increases of certain things. If I know some of Dane's IT plans, I've been communicating, we're looking to do this or do that, we're gonna need this. I know we've been living off the same roof budget for a number of years since I've been here. I've really been working with Katie and I've driven at home. We really to not continue to provide the same level of service at this amount of money because we had a big shift toward digital media versus printed media. The digital platforms are a lot more expensive. And so I've been able to send material and fax over and I, my, that stuff is being submitted. Now, whether it gets proved or not, I, I don't know. Yeah, and I'm, of course, I'm thinking transportation costs, so obviously. Yeah. Right. And, What's your sense of, of what, what latitude that you're getting, if any, on that front? It's, it's being communicated and it's being incorporated. So we'll see what gets approved above our, because I work with our liaison very closely. We talk just about every day. And I, I make sure I keep things in her ear as she crafts things for our department. So that's been the kind of approach I've been taking throughout the year. Hey, Players are going to be this much higher next year. Books are, uh, we're, we're going to be more 50 50 printed digital media versus 70 30. So we're going to need a lot more funds to do this and do that. And do we have a phone bill trigger yet? That's always been the. Uh, so yes, sir. <laughs> that sounds like a no. I have not. Okay. Well, no, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about black. You know, I think what helps that we do our department is we approach it two ways. We work with the county works with budget, and, and then we work with our ladies on Aunt Rudy. So I'm sure Christian is working with Brian and telling Brian, you know, hey, this is, we're going to need more money for transportation. So we approach it two ways. When they get ready to set up, okay, you get 10 million, you get 20 million, blah, blah, blah. Then we're, we, we got, Financial talking, and you've got sisters talking, and you fly where you need to Anything else for Mark? Uh, that's it for all the, the pre reads. Um, Becky is going to talk to us about Staff Development Day. Do I need to give you? I'm hopefully going to be able to share my screen. Jill, I'm gonna give it a try. I have a, uh, a quick presentation and um, I am going to open that up right now. And I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what a great time we had at, at the zoo. Let's see if I can make this work. Can everybody see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, good. It's not just a picture of my email. That's wonderful. We're off to a good start. Um, so to this year, we were able to do our staff day at the zoo, staff day 2022 at the zoo. And I'm just going to go over a little bit of what the day was like. And I'm going to mostly uh, let the evaluation speak for themselves. We had a keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Beth Patton uh, from SU. She did a speech uh, called When the Going Gets Tough, the Tough Get Resilient. Um, she talked about some of her experiences as a librarian during Hurricane Katrina, uh, traumatic stress and how it can impact staff and um, ways that you can find to move forward, advice for radical self-care, different ways to create certain policies. And the survey said, uh, speaker was engaging, had very interesting stories, suggested more iSchool speakers. Um, the key, just keynote speaker with an exclamation point. Um, Dr. Patton and the location and the meal provided. Um, this was all some of their favorite parts of the day. Keynote speaker was great. I love Dr. Patton. So uh, I feel like staff really got a lot out of her, her speech and um, some ways of, of doing self-care um, and moving forward after COVID. Um, the location being at the zoo was really a big hit with staff. Um, we had a lot of fun going around and seeing the animals. Um, survey says <laughs> zoo location was a big hit. Have it here again next time, just to flat out demand, have it here again all the time. Uh, everything was well done. Zoo is a great fun spot. Um, somebody just said zoo again and again. Um, connecting with staff was, was named, but the zoo was a close second. I haven't been to the zoo since childhood. Um, one of my favorites was love OCPL, love the zoo, which I thought was a really positive way for people to be feeling at the, at the end of staff day. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, we did a slideshow, uh, at, during the event that was just of pictures that people took. While they were at the zoo, they emailed it to our communications email address and we created a slideshow that was playing during the event. And um, I thought it was really special. Uh, people really liked it. So after the PowerPoint, I'm just going to do a very quick slideshow with some pictures from the zoo to give you guys that same sense of, of the kind of bonding, um, wonderful day that it was. Uh, another big part of it was spending time with friends and coworkers. Um, and we just really got to hang out and reconnect with each other. Um, we're at a lot of different locations. The member libraries were invited to. So we got to see a lot of colleagues that we haven't been able to see in person in a long time and just bond with each other and, and, and get to know each other again. And um, we have a lot of new staff um, that, that got to meet uh, everybody and, and as they say, and, and survey says um, they got to meet the new staff, um, put faces to names. You know, a lot of times we've only uh, communicated with each other by email, um, getting to spend time with other libraries at the zoo, other library workers at the zoo was fun. Um, they, that, that was a big part of it. Uh, we wanted to make sure that this staff day, the networking component was a big, was a big part of our push. Um, I was on the committee for the 2020 staff day that never happened. And that had been our plan back in 2020. And I think it was even more important uh, after the last two years that we've had. So, and I think we, we managed to achieve that goal. Uh, we had a visit with a porcupine that um, was really a big hit. I, uh, I was a little surprised. I, I don't, um, porcupines are not necessarily my favorite, but boy, as you can see from the picture there, the staff really loved the porcupine. And in a lot of the evaluations, they said that was their favorite part too, was, was the porcupine named Muppet. Um, years of service awards we did for the first time in many years. Um, I think Gail, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was 2015. 
the last time I did the Years of Service Awards. Um, so we give out awards for 10 years, 15 years, 20, 25 years. We had somebody get a Years of Service Award for 40 years. Um, she's been with us for 40 years. Uh, so there was lots of applause, um, lots of congratulations to each other. It really was a special, special moment. Um, and Gail really did a lot of hard work to print that, to do all that. She printed out all the certificates, put the nice things on them, organized them, um, and it, it meant a lot to staff. Uh, our staff association does a raffle every year. Uh, they had a lot of really great gift baskets. Um, one of the survey responses was, wish I won a raffle, which uh, I thought was, <laughs> that was pretty funny. So they, they did a great job with that. Um, the results of the evaluation uh, were very positive, as you can see from Katie's expression. Um, that was basically the look on everybody's face the, the whole day. Um, we had 77 total responses. Uh, our rating for the day was 9.08 out of 10, which I thought was really great. Um, everybody said that the location was great. The best part was hanging with the staff and um, it was a lovely time. Uh, some final words. Um, it was so great that staff could spend the day at the zoo. Great job committee and thank you OCPL board and Focal. Uh, Focal was the ones who footed the bill and um, we just couldn't be more grateful and thankful. My favorite quote from any of the evaluations was that <clears throat> the people, the best part of someone's day was the feeling that OCPL cares about its staff and the community. It's great to see leadership folks working together for the good of all staff. And that made me really happy. Um, all the administrators in OCPL leadership had a role at staff day. And um, I think we really came together to, to make the staff feel supported and, and uh, that we appreciate them. People really like the food, of course. Uh, that was that the zoo really I can't speak highly enough anyone who's thinking about having an event at the zoo they catering was excellent the the planning was excellent all of their proceeds go to support the zoo it's actually a nonprofit uh, catering group so all of our you know expenses for staff day went right back into the zoo another county department I don't think it gets much better than that um, so yeah, I think a lot of people said that they felt that they felt supported and that they had a great day. Um, I, I think it was a big success and thank you to everyone who made it possible. Um, having your support on such a special staff day, um, it really meant a lot to staff. So, and now I'm just going to do some quick pictures. Hopefully this works. Um, one. No. No, why did you say okay. Just so you can see some happy staff faces. Do you guys all see the picture? Or not the picture yet, but the spinny, the spinny blue thing? <laughs> no, it sort of went off. Yeah. So Becky, um, how many people were at staff day and how many uh, system uh, member directors, whomever. So we had just about a hundred people, um, and I think a little bit less. I think maybe like eighty or so. Um, and I'm not quite sure what the percentage is on the members. I know everyone from Lafayette came. Um, Meg was there. Mandy was there. I felt there was maybe, if I had to give a number, I'd say twenty-five percent. Um, of the people who attended were from a member library and uh, the rest were, were us. Is that? Oh, oh here we go. Some pictures. I got to start at the beginning here. Um, so just some, can you guys see those? Yes. Um, that was our keynote speaker. Uh, Dr. Patton, she did a great job. Um, staff just kind of got to walk around and, and oh, sorry, Christian, I didn't mean to zoom past the one of you on there. <laughs> uh, 
Um, love this one uh, of us all having a great time and laughing. Um, some pictures of the animals. Everybody just was sort of filled with this really uh, joyful feeling. Um, staff got to spend time with each other and get to know each other, you know, put, put names to the faces and get to see friends they hadn't seen in a long time. Get to see the elephants, always a treat. Um, member libraries, a lot of Marcellus, a lot of people from Marcellus were there as well. Um, and that's so nice to get to know. I mean, we don't see each other at the branches often enough, much less our colleagues at the member libraries. And that's what makes this system so strong is all of the diverse libraries from Jordan to ones in the city. And so it's, it's just, it was nice to get to meet everybody. Mark, what were you doing in that photo? <laughs> Mark is so going to kill me for putting that picture in there. <laughs> um, but staff just laughed and had a great time and, and got to know each other and uh, at all the different levels. Um, administrators goofed around and showed we're not serious all the time. Not that anyone ever thinks that of me, but... Um, So just, just a really nice time. And uh, like I say, the pictures came up. Oh, and there's the porcupine, the hit of the day. So that is my presentation. And um, thanks to everyone on the board and for Focal and to Christian for advocating for such a greatly increased um, budget. We really, um, I think, took advantage of it and got a lot out of the day. So thank you all very much. But Becky, one more question. I know that Beth was your keynote, but I also heard you had panels. Yes, we did. Yep, we had uh, panels by staff. So um, we solicited questions um, from everyone who registered. We asked them what are some questions uh, that they would like answered, really kept it open-ended. And then based on the questions we got, we selected panelists who were best equipped to answer those questions. So um, we got a lot of questions about money handling. Mark was kind enough to share his time and answer those. Um, a lot of questions for frontline clerical staff, Ann Stever and Deb Turpening um, fielded a lot of those questions and did a great job. Um, we had a bunch of uh, IT questions. Uh, Dane did a fantastic job with those. I actually have one evaluation that uh, said that Dane's uh, panel presentation was their favorite part of, of the staff day. So um, he did excellent. And uh, Amanda Scavulli talked about member services and Amy Thorna talked about different adult services programs. And again, all of the questions came from ones that were submitted when people registered for the day and were answered by the person best able to answer them. So that worked out well. And the, oh, go ahead, Ed. Yes, I can't hear you, Ed. You have to look at the owl. Look at the owl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rebecca, thanks for the report. I think it was a big win for everybody, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to next year. Thank yeah. you. You see the eye, Ed? Thanks, Ed. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was the comment that I was fading out, and I hope it was just a comment on my voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. One more question. Um, um, I think. Uh, we allocated, was it $8,000 for mm -hmm. the event? And how did the budget work out? Do you know? I believe everything all told, we spent $7,000. Um, I believe that our bill from the zoo, Gail can speak to this a little bit too, it came to a total of like $6,700 um, with the catering and um, all of that. Does that sound right, Gail? That's, that's very close, yeah because then we also had the service award stuff we paid for, you know, like, because we had to catch up from past years. So 
I had one other question. How people are two people in the door or this happened before you came on? And Tom came before he even done our orientation. He came on the Friday and he wasn't he was starting with the county, so that's that. I had nothing yeah. to do that day, so <laughs> we were able to um, invite our CET staff as well, uh, which was really nice chance to bond uh, just with everybody from the family. So um, thanks to you guys, we were able to be liberal with who could come and have Tom and Maggie there, even though they weren't quite on the payroll yet. So it was lovely. So one more question. Sorry to be so detail oriented. No, no. Um, so, um, but it sounds like not all staff came. So what uh, should we do? Can we help you do for next year to get more staff there? Excellent question. Um, well, I have to say it was probably one of the better attended ones that I've gone to in my time here, but that doesn't mean that we can't do better every year. So, um, I feel like maybe if we did it at the zoo again, that would be a big draw to people. I know it is kind of weird to say, do the same location again the next year, but I think that it being at the zoo was a huge draw for staff and the zoo is so accessible. Um, that was one of the, the big things uh, picking the zoo was, was um, you know we have some staff with mobility issues, older staff, um, the zoo makes it so easy to get around and so pleasant to get around that um, staff had no problem with that. Um, and I can look into that too. Uh, they did suggest some more, some of the suggestions were for different specific speakers from the iSchool. Um, I think the fact too that the meals were paid for were a big draw. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know if you have any suggestions or anything you think of Jill, but I was really happy with the attendance and maybe as word spreads about how much fun this one was, any stragglers will want to come to it again next year. So that's my hope. Full attendance is a goal we can meet. <laughs> Becky, thank you. Okay, so um, we're on to resolutions. The um, first, oh, we should talk about, um, Christian, when do you want to talk about your proposals? You want to do resolutions first and then talk about sure. that? Okay. Um, so the first resolution is the annual reports. Oh, yeah. As written, I assume. Yeah. Uh, right. Any second on the first resolution? Second. So these are uh, the annual reports that by by law we have to submit every year. Um, one for um, the library. No. One, one for the library, one for the system. Yeah. One that says for live public and the social. Oh, never mind. Okay. One for um, the city library and one for the system. And I, um, I know that we don't have the reports to review, but I will assume that we'll get them at some point. Um, any, so we haven't seen the reports. They have to go in by, yeah, they're, they're probably late. Um, I'm just, I'm joking on that, by the way. I have no idea if they're late. Technically speaking, it's raining. We can move on much of it. No, it's all data driven. Okay. Um, so let us vote. Um, I'll start in the room. Ed? Yes. Maria? Yes. Tim? Yes. Lenore? Yes. Babette? Yes. Etta?
Ella, you're muted. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm also yes. Okay, so that's our first resolution. Second resolution, um, that the OCPL Board of Trustees approves the grant application submission to the Women's Fund of Central New York in the amount of $5,000 to create a baby wearing library, <coughs> both carriers and accessories to be loaned to the public at the Sewell Branch Library. And that was one of the pre-reads. Who would like to move it? So moved. That, that, thank you. Do I hear a second? Second, Lenore. Oh, I'll give well, it to Lenore. Doesn't thank matter. You. Any questions or comments about this? <laughs> This is Babette. I, I absolutely love the idea and would love to see this maybe expanded if, if this is successful at Sewell, expand it to some of the other branches. I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, anybody can go to Sewell and <coughs> um, borrow, but you're right, that, that is a burden for some people. Anything else? Starting in the room again, Ed? Yes. Maria? Yeah. Tim? Yeah. Lenore? I can't hear you, Lenore, but you could just nod your head. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, Ada? Yes. Babette? Yes. And I'm also a yes. <laughs> um, the next resolution uh, that the board, the Oceanville Board of Trustees approves the expenditure of $250 from unrestricted board designated funds to purchase the decision wise Spective 360 feedback assessment for one participant. This is oh. again uh, during the 360. We did one last year. The cost has not gone up. So Lenore, so. Oh, thank you, Lenore. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, is that that bet? Yes. yes. Okay. Any discussion? Voting again, starting in the room. Ed? Yes. Maria? Yeah. Tim? Yes. Lenore? Yes. Babette? Yes. Etta? Yes. I, I'm also a yes. Thank you. Uh, so the next resolution, last year we used um, Heidi Holtz as the person to um, help review the feedback. She's not available. So this is why the next resolution. Uh, resolve that the OCPL Board of Trustees approves the expenditure of $500 from the unrestricted board designated funds to purchase the decision wise effective um, for one individual post 360 feedback assessment coaching session for, uh, for one participant. Sorry, a little redundant, but do I hear someone move? Ed moves. Tim seconds. Any discussion? Um, so starting again in the room, Ed? Yes. Maria? Yes. Tim? Yes. Lenore? Yes. Babette? Yes. Edda, and I'm also a yes. Yes. Thank you. Those are our uh, resolutions so far. Um, we do have uh, three weeks from Christian about um, Proposals for focal, two proposals for focal uh, that we need to discuss, and um, an EDI consulting uh, proposal. So, Christian, if you want to. Sure. I just wanted to see what order you guys, what you order you folks would like me to touch base on. I've got the Everson Whitman celebration, I've got the EDI consulting, and then I didn't know if you wanted me to go through the proposals for focal, but I wanted to make them available to people if they wanted to take a look at them. So, I defer to the body. The first one's pretty easy. The Everson Whitman celebration. 
uh, the Everson Museum, they kind of reached out to us to see if we'd like to partner with them uh, for a celebration of Walt Whitman. The event is in August. It's called uh, Whitman on the Walls. It's a series of short films combined with live readings. Uh, and they were hoping that we could provide them with some books to give to kids, to motivate kids to get up and read poetry in front of a bunch of people on the plaza. Uh, it's 10 copies, each of two books. One is for younger kids, one is for slightly older kids. Um, I'd like to have 10 copies of each. Um, comes out to 420 bucks. I figured 30 bucks would be good for incidentals. We can't use collections money. Like we can't use money that we would normally buy books for the collection with because that is designated as books that are going to be used by the public in a library setting. So that's why we can't really use that funding. Um, Everson's been working with us really great. We have about three projects currently with them and this seems like a nice handshake to me and I'd like to get support for it. Do you want it separately or do I put it in? Uh, these would have to be separate. These should be separate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the bottom line cost is what? Uh, four fifty, four hundred and fifty. That's with an estimate of thirty dollars for shipping, but okay. yeah. So Ed, you would move spending four hundred and fifty dollars for the Walt Whitman collection of books to be given at the Everson Project. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, that's Lenore. Yeah. Who are the participants that we're going to be here? Teens and children. Um, and drawn, drawn from whoever we can pull from the Everson. It'll be a recruiting thing. It's an, uh, as I say, it's a, it's kind of a walk-in. It's a walk-in program, and it's a sign up, do a reading, get a book. Uh, some of it will be drop in. Yeah. So it's an event. Yes. It's called Whitman on the Walls. All right, so it, well, the, the event is the, the display, the commemoration, the Whitman commemoration. I'm just, I'm just curious how the, the young, the young people who are going to, uh, or not so young, I'm sorry for myself, I just want to how, how, how does it come together? Well, we will be working with the Everson and they're working with a group called the Whitman on the Walls who are the people who are actually putting on the display. It's gonna be a plaza event. So it'll be the event, but then, you know, it'll be displayed up on the walls, but then there'll also be some, you know, dialogue and that kind of stuff. Um, they'll be recruiting from, you know, from trying to pull kids in and promote to, to kids and we'll do the same. I'm no longer on the board, but I will say that used to be on the issue board, they did do a lot of, uh, they worked very hard to make outreach yep. to serve this community, and I would expect nothing less from them. Yep. But we will, uh, we'll have them on. They have a new, um, they have a new education, a new head of education, um, who we've been working, like I say, they're, they've been uh, very interested in working with us on the Syracuse, uh, one Syracuse, one Shakespeare. There is this, uh, we're also looking to work with them on the Juneteenth program. Kristen, this is. Oh. Hi, Babette. Go ahead, Babette. I'm sorry. Is Ed finished? I'm sorry. I'm never finished. Go ahead. <laughs> um, who at the Everson would we need to give some names? I'm thinking of Pete. So I'm thinking of some primarily um, black and brown student groups like Restore for Life, PGR, um, 100 Black Men, some other groups that we can make sure they can try to get some children involved. Uh, sure. I mean, I'm, if you have any contacts, I'm happy to pass them on and 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 help promote that. Okay. Is um is there are there other groups donating books also? Not to my knowledge. I mean, as I said, right now the only people that I've been in conversation with have been the Everson and their performers or their their the the presenters. Um, but that's been the conversation. I haven't been proximate to anybody else in that conversation. I'm not sure whether they are having other partners, programming partners, or not. It's the education person at the Everson who's yep. having this up. Okay. So, Kristen, can you find that out? Because I, I know of some other groups who might be interested in connecting with them. So, I'm sorry, Baba, find out what now? Whether there if, were other groups reached out to? If they're, if they're still interested in having other groups participate, not, not the students, but 
sponsors sure. also helps buy additional books or something. Okay, sure. Just sort of pertinent to this. Uh, we used to have a collection called a Pauli collection, which was 35 first editions of writings by and about Walt Whitman. Kept at Syracuse University with the Maria Carnegie. It wasn't air conditioning, it wasn't dirty control. So the Smith Hollywood was great on the fifth floor and it brought back. But trustees in the early 90s built the Lake Carnegie Square Hyatt, chose to sell off both the Smith and the Hyatt collection. Of course, that is the fundamental, fundamentally, most of our unrestricted funds where they came from. Something probably that very few other libraries had. And the argument at the time, I guess, was that well, only two people a year came to visit the library. Well, yes, but who knew they were here? Um, so let's vote if there's no other comments um, on this. This is the um, Walt Whitman on the walls. Funding of four hundred and fifty dollars. I will start in the room with Ed. Yes. Maria. Yes. Tim. Yes. Lenore. Yes. Babette. Yes. Eva. Yes. Thank you. I'm also a yes. Uh, the next one is the uh, EDI consultant fees. Yep. So uh, we had started a conversation um, with some folks at member libraries, and Jill, you've been part of the conversation about uh, expanding our EDI work, which was equity, diversity, and inclusion work, and working to create anti-racist policies and anti-racist language in our, in our organization. Uh, as we were kind of trying to find people who could assist us with this, uh, Dane helped me to reach out to some folks at Center State CEO, uh, and they pulled together a proposal for us, which I thought was a pretty strong package. Uh, it is, it's a $15,000 ask, it's $15,500, $15,500, uh, this would be $5,000 or $5,500 for them to uh, develop a, a curriculum with us, develop our needs, look at what the library's specific needs are, specific issues in history, uh, and, and stuff that we are dealing with, and then another 10 grand to do the training for the C-suite, it's a C-suite training, uh, it's designed for um, 10 leaders in the organization. The topics covered will be the historical context for race and racism, cost of race and racism, uh, to corporate culture, institutional bias and system change, leadership, equity, and implementing change, and implementation and accountability. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think this is the only thing that we would be doing to address uh, EDI in the library, and I don't think this is the, necessarily the only consultant that we will want to work with over the next few years as we look at this. One of the things I liked about the C-suite experience is that uh, with that, you're going from a grass tops perspective. So yes, it only impacts a small group of people, that is true, but those small, that small group of people then impacts policy procedures, leadership and organizational change uh, through, through the library, but then also I have a couple of folks at member libraries who are also interested in um so that's that's the ground that's the basis so how many um of, so 10 people how many staff and how many um from member libraries we haven't really determined those numbers yet i haven't gotten into that because i wasn't sure we, whether or not we we're going to be going forward on that i mean i think i'm thinking right now it's probably uh it's probably six, probably two people from Just Systems, uh, four people from OCPL, and then four member directors. I mean, four, C, oh, sorry, four people from OCPL City, two people who are specific to system, and then four member directors would be my recommendation to try and divide it up and spread out the influence as widely as possible. But we don't have specific names yet. Do they, um... Does their training have stated outcomes that wasn't in the package? Um, I, you know, I, I think that they're, no. What we got was the, you know, what if I sent you the contract and the contract and package is, is documentation okay. available by request. 
Um, you know, we had spoken to them about creating, you know, as I said, anti-racist policies, trying to actually change that dialogue. There were no clear measure impacts that came out of it. I think that part of the goal of the initial consultation was to come up with some measurable impacts that we could produce as a result of the, the training. Oh, Babette and Lenore, sorry. Babette Lenore, you can, oh, okay. So what's the what's the um what's the assessment phase look like? So what are they going to be doing in discovery with you to, to identify your your needs for the system to put this um to customize this programming for you, customize this training for you? Um I, I, again, as I understand it, um, we'll be meeting with them to discuss some of the specific issues of EDI and anti-racism in libraries, uh, in the civil service environment, in Syracuse in particular, um, but then also some of the issues that we face as an outward facing, public facing institution. Uh, libraries as a profession are doing a lot of work on EDI at this point in early conversations. I was able to share with them some of the research that's gone into that at the outset. So part of their consulting fees with them would be them coming up to speed and kind of the expectations, needs, and singularities that are specific to public libraries. Okay, so they don't they don't have an assessment tool that they'll come in and use with you, um, in, in, in do, including surveys and interviews, focus groups, all of that. The timeline for what that process looks like. Have they sketched any of that out? This is not an audit. This is not intended as an EDI audit. So they don't, that is not. No, I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not thinking of it like an audit, but if they're going to assess what you need, they have to do an assessment. So it's not an audit, but an assessment. If they're going to customize the training for your needs, how are they gathering that information? I believe that that would be coming from speaking to our leadership and looking at our pre existing policies. Um, but again, we're, we're in the early days of the conference. Well, we're in the early days of the conversation and, and um, they hadn't spoken to that as an aspect of it. And do we have references from other groups in the community that they've done this training for? Uh, no, no, we have, a, we have a bio sheet on the person that they would be recommending or that they would have working with us as well as a series of endorsements. Uh, some of which I think are local, but we don't have a recommendation from other people on whether or not, you know, San Jose CEO would have a And who's the person? I'm sorry, about that I don't have that in front of me right now. Okay. Put the contract in front of me, but I'm happy to share it with the board okay. if you'd like. I sent it out. Beba, it's in the it's in the file I sent, but it's at the end. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the last question is, Christian, what is your so once we sign the contract, what is the time frame for the process internally for you guys? So if we sign the contract with them, you bring them on, when do you look to start, get this up and running? I'd like to have the whole thing up and running and done in six months. Okay. Or that we move on it quickly. Um, we have a lot of the stuff in place that we have. You know, we have a lot of the things that we need in place in order to have this work. And we have been doing some pre-work with them uh, that would be such that I think we could we could get off to a good running start. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Lenore? Yeah, a couple of questions, Christian. Um, so you, you have no references really to check to see if, they, if we had some, you know, results that might come to us from other companies that may have used this seat? Because I'm interested. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and I also wonder if there's comprehensive training, maybe you negotiated this out, out already. I mean, if they're going to train 10, could they train 20, 25? It's just the more people that can hear this and would they allow you to tape any of the sessions that are, um, trainable sessions that you could move on to staff, new staff, us. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's other vendors if we wanted to do like a large training that would be for this is the set training and we're running groups of 10 through and that kind of thing. This, this training is really designed more for a leadership group. Um, I'm trying to envision this as kind of grass tops change um, as, you know, making a, you know, if you do, if you do a program for 100 people and it impacts 40 of them, but only 10 of them actually have an ability to make any change in their organization. 
then maybe we should have just gone straight for a highly motivated 10 who could make initial changes quite quickly. Um, they do have it set at 10 because it is a pretty intensive process. They felt like 10 people is, that's actually the max that they do for this C-suite training. Um, and so the, the thought was that, that these individuals would then have a ripple effect that would go out to a larger, to a larger body. And this consultation is not really for mass trainings. This is for a very specialized training for the leadership that again, would then hopefully have a ripple effect. Um, when it comes to larger mass trainings, there are probably other places we should be looking to for that. Um, so to your top brass? Yeah, I mean, Center State CEO is really focusing on uh, not-for-profit development, not-for-profit leadership development. So these are really the folks to go through for that. Uh, when it comes to other library diversity training and EBI training in a broader sense, there's a ton of vendors that we could go to. I actually met with some people uh, yesterday in Albany, who I think would be wonderful for us for doing that on the public facing and the staff facing. Um, what's nice about this is that, again, this is trying to influence the influencers. Got it. Thank you. So um, I feel like I don't have enough information because I, I okay. need, I feel like I need more information about Center State CEO and, and what they do. Um, but also, how does this fit into the larger training around EDI? If and not even just one, then, what's, then what are the other pieces and how does this all go together? Because um, it's a lot of money for, for a nonprofit to spend $15,000 on 10 people. It's a lot. A lot. Yeah, my concern is not with the substance of the uh, um, equity conversion and inclusion efforts, but it is, uh, Christian, I, I'm just... Uh, can, you, can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, Christian, I just want to present this to you as, as input, because I, 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 sometimes I have to communicate with you directly. Sure. That it just, um, your request is to begin development and implementation of the C-suite experience and the contract available for the by board. And that goes to Joe's point on detail. Um, uh, I'm supportive of the concept to try and enhance uh, <coughs> uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion efforts by the, the, the system. Um, I think that this is a little bit less than fully formed, uh, other than working through center state to hire a consultant. Um, that's just that, that's my my reaction here. Again. I want to emphasize not opposition, um, but you know, I'm kind of echoing what Jill just said. This is Babette, and I, because we're just starting the strategic planning process, um, like this should be a part of a larger setting of strategic goals and priorities. And so, so we're looking at this comprehensively. And so, once the C suite gets it, then how do we roll this out to everyone else? So I am, I am definitely for the training to happen. I want us to, I would ask that we just take a step back and think about holistically, how do we, 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 we get the C-suite training and then we execute it across the, the entire organization. The other concern I have is this, this is a brand new space for center states. They are not necessarily a, they have not been a trainer in the JEDI space, which is justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. This is something that they've added in the last year or so since George Floyd, two years now. Um, and so there might be stronger players in this space for us. Not sure, but I know that this is something, this is a fairly new business line for Center State. This has not been something that's been in their wheelhouse for very long. Thank you. Thanks for the input. Um, we'll try and do a revision and see if it works. Yeah, Jill, I just moved I, in that, in that note, I moved the table. Yeah, it, it's not, we don't have a resolution on it. So, right. yeah. It's just information. Yeah. Uh, two other proposals. Um, and these are important because Focal would like to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, would like to um, uh, vote on funding for 
uh, OCPL at their June meeting. And they uh, uh, asked for proposals that could be funded. The two proposals that Christian has are the one on incarcerated story time and the other on uh, period justice. Um, so I'll start small and then go bigger. The incarcerated story time, this is for a tech package that would support uh, story time for incarcerated persons. Um, it's a really successful program. It's actually been shown to, um, you know, there's early indicators that it actually decreases recidivism and makes it easier for re-entry. Did you say expansion? No, sir. No, we're not doing anything with James. Right. We did. We did. Well, we did. But yeah, we're not we at the moment, and we haven't been since so uh, in my time. I don't believe that. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know what the prior program was. I wasn't here. Well, I mean, okay, sorry. Um, anyway, so it was my understanding that this was a new program for us. We had been able to do a thing where uh, prisoners were allowed to have contact with and did uh, story time in in the jails, um, but it wasn't it wasn't a recorded story time. That, to my understanding, it was um, recorded. It okay. was. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Then I, I I'm 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 not familiar with that. Um. So this is an ask for um, a five thousand dollar tech package that would provide um, everything we need to do uh, recorded. The temp. The, right now the focus is on recorded uh, story times versus uh, live streaming. Uh, the technology for recorded tends to be a little bit lower. Um, I'm sorry, the te technology for recording ten tends, the technology requirements for recording tends to be hot, lower because the streaming requirements from prisons is very high. It's very difficult to be able to stream things from prison because of security issues. So we may be looking at a, a DVD kind of package as we can get started. Okay. Oh, this is this is for Beth. I would just ask Christian that you um, that the staff um, take a look whether we vote on this today or not. Take a look at because I can't remember the young woman who ran it for us the last time, but it was very successful. We got some great press around it. She did a couple presentations for the board around it. It was an amazing program. And so when I saw this, I thought this was renewing what we had previously done. Right. Um, so um, I would just urge that the staff go back and take a look at what we previously did because it was really an amazing program. And so if we don't have to, um, if we can use some of that data from that previous program to help make sure that we are improving it, this this reiteration of the program, I think that'd be great. Um, my only question about it was uh, impact, was staff impact. I don't know if, if this is staff manning, uh, uh, helping with this or, Huh? Personing. Personing. Yeah. Peopling. Um. <laughs> well, this, this came out of a conversation that we had with um, outreach and programming, and there was a lot of interest both from outreach and programming some from, and from some other frontline staff of doing this. So it would be an opt-in. I don't think we're going to require people necessarily to do it, but I think we get good buy-in, and I know that there's a number of members of staff who are interested in that. Did I hear someone move it? I just, yeah. Mm -hmm. And at second. And at second. Any other discussion? So again, the, our, we're voting to um, recommend this to FOCAL. So this would, would go to FOCAL for funding. Um, I'll start in the room again. Ed? Yes. Maria? Yes. Tim? Yes. Lenore? Yes. Babette? Absolutely yes. Etta? Yes. And I'm also a yes. Thank you. Thank you all very much. It's great. I'm excited. I'm really excited about this program. We actually have a really good contact with Brooklyn to be able to help us um, figure out some of the stuff as well, as well as going to our staff. Um, so the other proposal is for period justice. This is for $12,000 to provide um, uh, feminine hygiene dispensers in all libraries in Syrac library in all OCPL Syracuse locations. Um, it also gets us two years of 100% cotton um, products, uh, shipping, and some promotional materials. Um, you know, why this is important, um, access to feminine products is a huge issue for large portions of our population. This is not necessarily a new idea. Libraries are doing this. Um, we do not have, Jill, you had asked about what do we have for these things now. We don't actually have anything like that in any of our bathrooms right now. Um, so this would be new 
for that. Um, and it, it could be a really great uh, program to support and encourage women's health, um, particularly with that. And is this um, all bathrooms? So is this like uh, female, male bathroom, yes. gender neutral bathroom, staff bathroom? Yes. Okay. And then um, I didn't do the math. How? So how many are there? Uh, 38. I actually asked Becky. I got you. 34. 34. Thank you, Becky. Yep. <laughs> and you had also asked about you know, concerns about vandalism. We really don't have significant levels of vandalism in our bathrooms on, on much of anything. I mean, you know, that's stall wall kind of stuff, but we're not getting the same strips off or anything like that. Uh, and the other question I had was um, funding after the two years. Uh, honestly, the actual costs of the resupplies are pretty low. And our thought was that we could probably go to women's health initiatives. We could go to Planned Parenthood. We could find other partner organizations that would be happy to support us once we have the infrastructure. Okay. Those are my questions. Any other thoughts? <laughs> Maria moved it. Anyone want a second? Second. Thank you. Thank you, Babette. Any other discussion? Yeah, um, Becky had those numbers for us. I'm sorry, I don't have the specific. Oh, uh, it's in the, in the budget that you have on. Uh, oh, thank you. It's uh, five, 540. That's for two years. Then, yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know for two years. Yeah. For all machines. Okay, so starting again in the room. Ed, Ed, yes. Maria, yes. Tim, yes. Lena, Lena, Lenore, sorry. Lenore? Yes. Babette? Yes. Edda? Yes. Thank you. Oh, I'm a yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, uh, that's it for the things on the agenda. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to move to go into executive session, if we need to have one. Um, okay. Okay. So um, <laughs> then, sorry about that. Uh, okay, uh, then do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Wait a second. When is Wayne Schneider? I had an occasion two weeks ago, I had to speak with uh, Mayor Ben Walsh on a number of subjects. He was emergency stuff on board. Him, you need to talk louder. I suggested to the mayor that it would be great if uh, he could be doing some things with uh, funding. And it would be great if they could put some initiatives, move people, find ways to move people into the branch library program to get them that are appointed to our libraries. And, and, uh, so I have one more thing. Glenna uh, in chat says Liverpool has free menstrual products. Thanks, Lana. Okay, now you can move. I move to adjourn. Second. Everybody hear that? All in favor, say aye. Yay. Aye. 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 Anybody <laughs> want to stay longer? No. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.
Bye. From the face, so we want to go near the background. Yeah. I can run the show. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I, it's more just okay. This is somebody saying attention. I got the read between the lines. Yeah, there was an ongoing. Yeah, um, yeah. I would have, and I was really six of one, half dozen of the other. There's part of me that wanted to write a letter to say, hey, thank you for being engaged, but you know, trust us, we're doing our best yeah. with this. But well, I just hold on a second. They hinted at lack of oversight by the board, but that was, you know, that was a whole other thing. 